Hey folks, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell. If you have been around my channel for any length of time, you have heard me talk about this project at some point. It's called An Adventurer's Tale, and it's a point-and-click adventure game set in the world of the Weave and the Void. If you've never played a point-and-click adventure game, that's okay. They were mostly a thing when I was growing up. They kind of still exist, but not in the way that they used to be. Uh, before MMORPGs and before, you know, the console games and everything else and controllers, you know, we used to have these very simple games where it was based on you click a mouse and you move the character to that destination. You click on an object, you pick up the object, you click on an NPC to talk to the NPC see that kind of stuff so they were literally called point and click games and they were mostly based around adventures rpg adventures and the early games like uh, say king's quest back in the day or space quest didn't have any combat it was just story and puzzles so you were given lots of narration you were given lots of dialogue to go through and some basic puzzles and riddles and quests that you could complete um, later on games like quest for glory added a little bit of generic combat into the mix uh, but for the most part point and click games have always been about the journey of exploration through narration and dialogue sort of like having a novel that you're reading but it's unfolding in a 3d environment or a 2d environment depending on how the game is laid out now we've been working on our point and click adventure game since march of 2021 and it's set in the world of the weave in the void which is a, a big fantasy world there's a tabletop source book uh, adventure modules map packs art packs all that stuff over on our patreon page there's also a fantasy book series uh, the first novel of which is actually coming back from alpha readers right now on april 15th um, and then that goes into the next draft phase so that should be published this summer but it's already been published in serialized format over on the patreon page for our patrons and today the reason i'm coming to you with this today is because um during the course of finishing up the game i mean i'd say we're probably in the last 15 percent of getting this out the door now um and my brother sent something over this morning which i really wanted to share with people here um, it's, I think it's a really cool thing. And, and what, what I'm show what I'm going to be showing here is a very early access type, you know, alpha presentation, but it's, it was really cool. And I've been nerding out over it all this morning and I, I really wanted to talk about it a little bit. So when we eventually, you know, when we first put this together, you know, we're going back two years and we're building this in Unreal 4 and none of us are, you know, we're not animators, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we can do a lot of things with blueprints and in-store assets and kit bashing and so on and so forth. And Chris could do, you know, some stuff with, you know, art. Um, I do all the writing. Uh, my brother does all the Unreal stuff. Um, and we've just been assembling this with a bunch of different uh, assets and packs and kit bashing and things that we've put together. Um, and we have something that is a lot of fun and it looks good. And we've gotten a lot of good feedback from people on it. And it, the original design was something that was like King's Quest, you know, with modern graphics. So story, narration, puzzles, dialogue, and everything else. Well, recently, my brother uh, came to me and he was like, I think I can do cutscenes. What do you think about doing cutscenes? And I went, well, if it's as long as it's not going to add a lot to the dev time, you know, because we do want to get this out the door, you know, if you think you can get something done and 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 have it be something that's easy enough to put together just go ahead and do it and he did and he sent something over this morning and it looks so cool um it was not something that was planned um and so now we're literally we've been back and forth on whatsapp all this morning i'm recording this by the way i don't know if i'm going to publish this today uh it's the morning of the 14th um yeah, i might publish it today we'll see uh but if, if i do publish this tomorrow i'm recording this on friday um April 14th at like 5.45 in the morning. We've been going back and forth on WhatsApp for like the last hour because he sent this over to me. And I already wrote dialogue for it and everything because I was like, this looks really cool. We got to do this now. And then we're also discussing now, well, can we do this in strategic locations and maybe add a few of these cutscenes in to add a little bit more cinematic depth to what our game has? Because, we're, you know, this was not planned. This was just one of those happy little accidents that happened along the way as we Bob Ross our way through game dev <laughs> anyway the original intent for this scene was when the character comes back into the scene what we originally had written in our script was 
Um, if you've ever played the demo before, or if you've watched this from us before, this scene, this is the, the original prototype demo scene that we put together, you know, a year and a half ago for players to play through. Um, this open street doesn't have anyone on it. There's Corbin Fern, who is the um, smith here on the left. Um, and then you just have the street and there's four buildings here we have the smithy which is right above me and then over here i can't point all the way over there because my green screen's gonna that building over there is the um general store that building up there is the bookstore and then up here we have um beyond that is the, uh, the the tavern which is your mother's tavern and you have a room in that tavern so when you first start off the demo if you've ever watched me do a playthrough for anything else or if you played the demo you come out of the tavern you hit this open street early on in the game and it's open and you can go to all four of the buildings you can go into the buildings there's some quests you can do and everything else and then as you continue to complete quests um, eventually you come back here and there are three adventurers who have uh, appeared who are now standing in front of the fort, which you do see here represented in this still shot from the video. So the idea my brother sent me, he's like, I think I can do a cutscene showing the arrival of the um, um, adventurers as opposed to just them suddenly being there once the character returns to this scene, which is totally fine, by the way. It's, it's you know, that's the way it would have been done back in the old King's Quest days and everything else. And for us building our first adventure game like this, we were shooting for something simplistic because we're not animators. So it was like, are we going to be able to use animation packs that exist to be able to get something that looks good enough to be able to do something like that? We weren't sure. So we just kind of wrote it off the table and said, well, we'll just do stationary. So we wrote everything with you know things being stationary we can have some basic animations in place for like the idle animations but in terms of walking and stuff you know it was something we weren't sure how we were going to be able to you know pull off or if we were going to be able to pull off and then we started having discussions around it and i want to show you what he sent me this morning so i'll shut up here um there's a section here um, where you're going to walk back into the scene and you'll notice here as he walks back into the scene it's empty at the moment because he's literally just arriving into the scene now had we done it the way we wanted to uh, originally had written in any case when he walked back into the scene the adventurers would have been standing there but instead we now have this now what I'm about to show you bear in mind this is a um, it's uh, this would be the alpha version the, er the you know the earliest alpha version so the dialogue that you see here is not the actual dialogue of what the characters are going to be saying as they arrive in the scene. I actually already just went and wrote the dialogue to give to my brother because he just put some placeholder stuff in here uh, to show the, you know, what this was going to look like in a mock-up. And it looked really cool. So here we go. So you arrive in the scene, and then we get to this cut scene here. Come, God, do keep up. And so we have these three adventurers walking up the path, um, arriving at the forge, um, there's no sound effects yet or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I've wasted on cross country. Oh, a little bit of a Lord of the Rings reference. And then the camera spins back around and our character now sees these three adventures in the uh, scene and he can go ahead and go on to the bookstore and enter into the bookstore. And I just, this has opened up a lot more, you know, so now we're literally sitting here going, well, where, do we want to add any more strategic little, I mean, it's a little quick 15 to 30 second cutscene, so it's not like it's going to add a ton of dev time, but it does allow us to add a little bit of flavor here and there um, to kind of bridge the gap between scenes um, if we want to have a little bit of a narration cutscene. So anyway, I've been nerding out over this. It might not seem like a big deal to some people. Um, but it is for us because it's it's been us, you know, learning our way through some things in Unreal. I mean, we spent seven years working on an MMORPG in in Unity, but that was a little different than coming in and, and picking up Unreal. And so there's been somewhat of, you know, a little bit of a learning curve with Unreal, learning blueprints and everything else. Uh, but Joey has done an admirable job of, of getting this, you know, to where it needs to be functional and everything else. Um, so, yeah, it's all coming together now. Um, we're in the final stages. Uh, this, you know should be out this summer at some point, depending on whether or not we look for a publisher or if we self-publish. But I would urge people, if you like what you see here today, um, 
one of the easiest ways to get involved in everything that we have going on. I, I talk about it at the end of my videos a lot. Um, and some people go over there and, and, and check it out and everything else. But we do have a Patreon page for all of this stuff. Um, and if you go over to the Patreon page, uh, there is a demo of this game available um, that has been freely available for, I think, since like October, September, October of 2021, I think. So year and a half, the demo has been available. Um, the source book and the first module for our tabletop game published in May of 2022. So that's been available for a year now. Um, we've published map packs. We've published art packs. We've published additional adventures in that tabletop game. The actual first novel was published in serialized format on the Patreon page where chapters were coming out twice a month. Um, until we had the first book fully uh, completed and then that first novel went to the alpha readers about a month ago and I'm supposed to get that back on the 15th of April at which point I then go into revisions to get draft 2.0 ready and at some point that'll be getting published this summer on Amazon we will be uh, self-publishing that book um, in paperback and hardback format for those of you who want to just get the book format otherwise if you've been a patron supporter um, uh, patron supporter you actually get the digital version of that um, based on your tier and everything else but i would say if you want to pre-order this game you can go over to our patreon page also uh, if you subscribe at the tier for th this uh for the for the pre-order of this we do dev diary posts every sunday we've been doing these for two years so there's a hundred plus um dev diaries related to the building of an adventurer's tale so you can go all the way back to the beginning plus before we ever started doing things um, on the dev diary page as well we also have all those brainstorming sessions that we did in public back when it used to be called project dramond you can actually find a playlist here on my youtube channel called project dramond where we my brother and i and chris would have meetings publicly and we would just brainstorm and talk about the development of this so if that kind of stuff excites you you can also check out the project dramond playlist here there's like a hundred plus videos uh, freely available um, if you're into game dev stuff. But I would say check all this stuff out because this made me nerd out this morning seeing this cutscene, uh, you know, being able to, to know that we could do this now um, and have, you know, this little animation sequence and be able to do these. Um, again, this was just a mock-up, so no sound effects and no dialogue and everything else. But it's just something that's really cool, really exciting. Um, I'm, I'm stoked about this. It, it opened up some more possibilities for me. So, yeah. Anyway, you can also, uh, if you like what you see here today, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support here directly on my channel if you want to support Chris and I directly. Um, memberships on the channel, super chats, super thanks, all those things. But really, you should go over to the Patreon page and, you know, pre-order this game, check out our, you know, tabletop stuff, the fantasy book series, the entire world of the Weave in the Void. Check all that stuff out. In any case... Um, yeah, I've been rambling longer than I thought I was this morning. So check all this stuff out. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. You can also join our Discord. All the links to all those things are down below. So I'll see everybody next time. Peace.